Oi, oi. Hey guys, welcome back to Martin Digger channel for an exciting post today where I am going to share my research. So buckling, you're going to enjoy this. I hope uh, you like my happy hat for today. It is in totally in theme with what we're going to be talking about. So the ideas that I'm going to be putting forward today uh, are shared apparently by some some aspects of academia as a reality um, but it's probably the most hidden secret um, out there of who are the rule rulers the real rulers of this realm and i have proposed that we're under maritime law and this is the law of the phoenicians but i think it goes a little bit deeper than that a lot deeper than that so we're going to look into that so what do we really know of the past thousands of years ago? Not much, guys. There's just been fragments of information come through because the whole world got destroyed. We got classic and classical citations, but um, a, lot, a large amount of them are based on allegory myths so, such as um, Ovid or uh, Homer's Iliad, etc. Um, and um, loosely fitting together events, which we're going to look at uh, right now. So um, the evidence, um, what they find um, out of antiquity, is under uh, strict scrutiny um, and critique from academia, um, as in it has to fit within the official narrative. Anything outside the official narrative, and it won't be spoken about. So I'm going to sh share this out, if you would, guys. Um, buckle in, you're going to enjoy this. Um, I, I don't know if any of you heard of any of this before, but what I'm going to propose is an ancient Persian bloodline ruling contemporary realm, ruling the world today. So let's have a look if there's any reality in that. So what you see here is images of people from Iran. Now what you find is there's a large amount of people in Iran with ginger hair, blue eyes, or gray eyes, or um, hazel eyes. Um, you get them pretty much um, all over this, this area. Um, they are thought to be the um, Nazis went in search of in 1933, um, the quest for the origin of the Aryan people. Aryan, Iranian, it's almost the same word. Um, and the Nazi scientist um, on a Nazi uh, explorer, German explorer, excuse me, Julius Klaproth, uh, claimed that Iran, uh, the, claimed that Iran, excuse me, um, was the cradle of the Aryan race. Um, also, the Germans, the Romans, the Greeks, the Slavs, the Letts, the Celts, who I originally thought were from the Indus Valley civilization of India, but I think they are because that is also incorporated in the Persian Empire. Um, parts of India, like I just said, the Indus Valley, um, and Iran, including um, Afghanistan, Armenia, Georgia, where Stalin is from, um, and Kurd, Kurdistan. All share this. Ginger hair and blonde or strawberry hair. Beautiful, aren't they? So the narrative is, uh, from as I said, I'll share a video with you later. You can look at uh, somebody else's research, but they put it together that they suggest that Romans are, in fact, originally Persians, Iranians. Italians are Iranians or Arians. Etruscans that preceded Rome, like Romulus and Remus, are Iranian. Um, Phoenicians seem to have come from the Red Sea in the area of the uh, probably Persian Gulf, um, possibly the Phoenicians also Persian. Um, there's also a suggestion that the Irish and the Celts, as I said, the Celts are supposed to be from the Indus Valley civilization, also Red Sea. It's a 7% of uh, North European population have ginger hair in including in Scandinavia, Scotland has a large amount, Ireland, and including in Wales as well, although we're mostly dark. This is an, an Afghan AI 
by the look of it. That doesn't look like a human being. Uh, there's some uh, Iranians with ginger strawberry hair. Now, I've got a bit of red in my hair, um, even like purpley in my hair when the sun goes through it in the summer. Um, my son also has um, red hair in his hair because he has um, Irish origins. And the color of these eyes, she has hazel eyes, just like my eyes. Well, mine's a few shades darker, but I do have some red in it. So the story is um, way off back when, um, in the time of uh, the Persian Empire, there was a DNA mutation amongst the elites there, uh, where they were blondes and they were redheads. Um, and these elite families are kept um, so empowered to today by um, interbreeding with one another. The Hasburgs are one of these, and including the stewards of Britain. It's hard to even imagine Henry Stuart and Elizabeth I being uh, Persian by origin, but they're, they're ginger. Um, you can see a Phoenician statue here with the cherubim, ginger hair, and you've got the, as we know pretty well by now, is the Horn of Plenty. Um, but this is uh, <coughs> Iranian. Sweet old lady. Okay. So um, this color hair is all over Europe. Is the Iranians the origins for it? Well, let's just have a look at the maps. Now, the Babylonian Empire and the um, Persian Empire overlap, but they don't overlap in territory. The Babylonian Empire rules apparently from 606 to 5. 36 BC, yet the Persian Empire about 500 BC, so 536. So in incorporated in that time of the Babylonian Empire is also, you can see it ends there just on the Euphrates, or just near the Iranian border, uh, but it's all inclusive in this. The Persia is there, and as you can see, interestingly, it goes all the way to India, the Indus Valley civilization, where the apparent Welsh was said to hail from, all the way to Macedonia, where um, another apparent blonde blue eyed dude by the name of Alexander the Great went and took over um, this empire, apparently, according to the narrative. Now, they state that the people who are blonde and blue eyed and live in this shwave here are uh, because of um, the Macedonian troops um, integrating with the females and because they have blonde hair and blue eyes. And that's why there are so many there today. But the architecture might give us a clue. You can see in Russia, which we, you know, we haven't said, is this the original architecture? Because the Greeks and the Romans and the US all share classical architecture but so do the Iranians you can see Tatarian style of what looks like a railway station Tatarian style buildings here and the lions and the whole Phoenician thing going on in Iran the fleur-de-lis clue we've seen the fleur-de-lis a thousand times we've been trying to decode it you see it in Christianity this which is possibly a lily you can see it here and you can see it in Carthaginian Empire, the Persian Empire, also as the fleur de lis, Mesopotamia. So, whatever the importance of said fleur de lis, there's one uh, common source. Uh, what if all of these common sources was ancient Persia? Iranian women in the 1960s, before the Shah of Iran, well, they were quite liberal. They were quite um you know they had college campuses they had everything going on the 60s were going on and then a shower and then it all got weird until the modern day as we know but they did have the initiative to bump up the oil price worldwide i think it was upon 1972 by three quarters making a ton of money and skinting out all of the world but you know so there they are medics and uh, the phoenician uh, the persians we're going to look into a bit about the punish the persians death cult Babylonian death cult that they were into, which is, I'm sure all you truthers would agree at this stage of the game, the powers that should not be uh, definitely running a Babylonian death cult, yeah, with the masquerade ball, the Phoenician masks, all of it. You know how this, you know how this shit goes down. 
So um, yeah, here's uh, their their capital, uh, Persopolis in Iran, which uh, we have proposed as being coincidentally like a computer circuit board. So here's um, the Polynesian Phoenician base. You can see standing on what looks like a lily, maybe. This one's standing on a dog. This one's standing on maybe a man. Um, but he's giving him an ank like thing, a bag full of something or other, but it's probably purple dye to the Phoenician emperor. The Phoenicians were doing a bit of sucking up. Now, this thing here, this looks like not a sword at all because it's square. Interesting, that. Huh? So, yeah. <clears throat> and here's uh, some examples of mud flooded Phoenician fortage. Um, excuse me, Persian fortage. This thing is there in the modern day. Uh, some of terrible event that the flood happened there. So, one common origin is it Egypt mm, or is it Persia or is it Angkor Wat? Well, we'll scrub Angkor Wat because apparently the Khmers were existing around 14, 1500s, so they were later. Uh, Persia, oh, so okay, we're going like VC. 500 BC, apparently, they got these three antennas on the head and the Egyptians also. Which common source? Were they all like got telly and Skype? Are they all talking to one another daily? <laughs> yeah, possibly. And um, the gods are shared. Now, the Phoenician, excuse me, the Persians had 12 gods, including uh, Mithra and um, Yuhura Mazda. Um, and the rise of Soriosterism, the um, the dark art mystical cults of the Magi, which the Magi seem to have ruled this dark cultic old world of Xerxes and Darius that existed in Persia, which we'll look at in a little minute with a little bit of humor added. So we got ancient Greece, Anatolia, Samaria with these winged beings, the Phoenician Shur, um, but as you can see. The Persians got the, got this thing, which is the melicillin, mermaid, Mithra, and there's many personifications. They're in Navajo as well, ancient Andes, Rhodes, and in Britain. This one's in Britain, although it doesn't look like that. It's got uh, something attached. Samaria, these wing goddages. So, you know, there's one common source. They're all sharing the same information. And what about architecture? These steel plates in Japan, in Bolivia, in India, in Ethiopia. These steel pins you see absolutely all over antiquity. We've all seen them. Um, but they're also in Iran, one common origin. And here's Pesopolis. It was an amazing complex, on par easily with Baalbek. Um, but, the, you know, it is customary in old times uh, to build a king's tomb during his life. But Darius last of the persian emperor uh, emperors of persopolis was slain by his own nobleman before the tomb was finished his death occurred in 330 bc while his army was being pursued by alexander the great now it looks like something has hit this like some kind of unbelievable weapon no it's blackened there the whole thing's just shattered <coughs> How could they do that with the weaponry of the days beyond me? But they were the wrecked and finished tomb of Darius the Third, the Persian. And here are Phoenicians bringing gifts to the Persian king because um, the Persian kings, they're in charge and they're subordinates and they're bringing him gifts. So are they doing it for trade? Well, he's got, he's not even looking at them. He's just got his back to them. You know, they're not even worthy of that. He's, he's, pa he's holding, passing him something in his hand. But these are, you know, they're no biggie. They're tradesmen at this period. He's got some onks, some vibrational instruments, and some dyes because purple was their main income. That's how they gained so much trade and commerce and uh, so much power. The Phoenicians was, excuse me, through purple dye. And these beautiful architectural pieces, the rest is pretty much ruined, though. Beautiful architecture of Persia. But they don't tell us anything. They didn't tell us anything in school. I knew nothing about 
it ran except for the news and it was always bad about them you know tehran they've got all of this same architecture we got for everywhere in the world we're all famous buildings that are just what we see everywhere look at this thing it looks like the station you get at, um in melbourne it was just like it same dope so um this is the empire of the macedonians that took over apparently after um darius's time and alexander the great there uh, so um i find it fascinating though really that you know this is supposed to be like thousands x amount of thousands of years ago yeah all that information we got about alexander the great yeah loads of information about him seems to be more information about alexander the great than there does about jesus christ because we've only got his early life in the last few years of his life there's like 30 odd missing years of jesus's life out of the bible so we got a lot of information i think that all of this alexandra business and all of it happened not long ago because a lot of the buildings are still there look at these absolutely stunning persian persian uh, tiles and buildings absolutely beautiful see the similar tiles to the entrance way of babylon um that is in the berlin museum with this blue tile uh, it's just beautiful to the eye <clears throat> um complete with antiquatech yeah. excuse me and uh, i don't know what this thing is but it's got a uh, maybe i was gonna say a bell in there but i don't think it is there's a ladder going up there but some sort of antiquatech tower there's a lot of antiquatech going on And this is out of an old Kirshner book, and it shows you the, um, you know, the powers that were Assyrian, Persian, and the Greco and the Romans. Okay, excuse me. Right, let's move on. So um, Isaac Newton, um, his book. Now, there's a lot of people out there which are happy to take Isaac Newton's theories for gravity. Um, so why wouldn't they for his historical research? And this is the chronology of ancient kingdoms by Sir Isaac Newton. And it is a fantastic book. Um, the chronology is really weird as well. It's like he talks about these things in a, you know, a latter sense. So um, what the clue I want to show you about this, though, but Herodotus uh, had mentioned the Phoenicians came from the Red Sea. I'm wondering if it's called the Red Sea because of the color of the hair of the people that came from there. But that is only around the Arabian Peninsula to the uh, Arabian Sea and into the Persian Gulf. Um, I, I, I think that the Phoenicians came from the Persian Gulf. And then, you know, the, the narrative is here, if you read this, I'm not going to read it all for you because it's in Middle English. Is, um, the Phoenicians, you know, expanded out, came out of the Red Sea, expanded out into the Mediterranean. A oh, very beautiful red sunset uh, into the wider Mediterranean, uh, but uh, they did they did uh, fall uh, as well apparently. So um, it talks about the culture uh, that they adopted the Phoenicians as well of music, poetry, letters, and metals, fa metal fabrication, arts and sciences, and customs of the Phoenicians. Is a little bit opposite to what we experience with um there's um literally the last chapters in this book which are mind-blowing um are all about um excuse me the solomon's temple and then you get up to the persians and uh the weird zoroasterists he's just a death cult a babylonian death cult um it's akin to cultural like a type of cultural marxism with the backing of bacchus it is the most strangest strangest cult so yeah isaac newton said the phoenicians came from that area now we've all know how this stuff goes down we've seen in the movies 300 and the years an envoy from the persians come in to say well you better surrender to persians because they're coming to take over the world and then there's a non-gay spartan apparently which goes sparta and kicks him down the well now one thing you do is never kick dead people or any people down your water supply do you know why yeah that's right contaminate and kill you all in there so that's not good thinking at all so there they are 300 of them blocked them in 
in a in a pass <coughs> in Greece and he kicked uh Darius's ass for Sparta. God, he's so angry. And you get um Xerxes, who's an eight foot giant in this. He's not in real life because he well, I don't know, but they got like bash reliefs of him and he looks nothing like. So he he basically was a bit pissed off with life and he'd done a, a black magic ritual and he was born an eight foot golden giant with special abilities. This is the moment when he uh, realized that he wasn't actually a god because he got blood and like, you know, that was weird for him. Last moment in the film. But there he is, Xerxes. He wants, he's like Jesus Christ. He's saying, no, he's like the devil. And um Leonidas is playing like Jesus Christ. And he's like, look at all of this in front of you. You can have it all. And he's like, yeah, I'm not so sure. Yeah, look at all them beautiful women, all that gold. Do you want it all? Just all you got to do is be my, be my pal and uh, kiss my feet. Or kneel. And he's like, yeah, you're all right. I got a bit of a dicky knee as it goes. So there he is, Xerxes. He's, no, he's nothing like his, his uh, picture of uh, Xerxes. He's got a bow here. <clears throat> And he also looks a bit short on the bash relief. But it is Hollywood. I prefer this Xerxes to this one. This one's got, you know. But anyway, so they got a crazy death court going on. So this is the part where you can see this as well in the film, in the other side of the world in Mexico, Apocalypto, when they're doing the death cult uh, ritual of a uh, coaxi cattle and they're executing people on the top of the pyramid. And they got exactly the same characters sitting around watching this going on because they are also the Phoenicians slash go back perversions of Persians. Yeah. So the perversity, the perverted perversions of Persians. I'm a poet and I know it. So they were the masters of magic. The magi was what you sought after to be in this culture. If you were high up, powerful, um, an elite, okay, of Iran. And they were dark, satanic belief systems, okay, based on sacrifice um, and dark arts. And they infiltrated um, society and like in a type of cultural Marxism and they've done it and they're there today. With all sorts of weird stuff going on. You know, you've seen all the agendas going on. Yeah. This is like only only fans these days, guys. Um <laughs> and the immortals. He had an, an army of immortals, so they didn't die, um, but they did get their asses kicked. But they um they weren't humans under you. So they had armies of non-human things as well. Uh, the Persians. And uh, ooh. They got some stuff going down in the uh, in the court of Xerxes. So the Nazis went off in search of, excuse me, in 1933, and they took them as far as Tibet in a search for the origins of the Aryans. And what we find, which will blow your mind, is the amount of people in today's society who are powerful who come from Iranian backgrounds. Now, I explained to you earlier that the uh, Georgians were thought to be original Iranian, um, Aryans, Iranians. And this is a photo of the young Joseph Stalin, probably number one killer of the 20th century. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, him and Mao were having a bit of a kill off, on they? But he did really, really well. And here he is, Joseph Stalin, an Iranian. There he is, a young man, Joseph Stalin, soon to become a leader of the Bolsheviks. And we know all that went down, don't we? So another little bit of a redhead going on, a bit of a ginger here. One of the most richest men in the world when he was alive, Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro is also believed to have Persian origins and if you make sense with his links with russia during the cuban missile crisis the russians the bolsheviks um, you know who's all connected now what we find with this with this narrative is closely connected with not the rothschild we see you had off it although he did have they did actually have um muslim ss uh regiments um the Jesuits. The Jesuits um, are big players in policing this um, strict secret, which I'm telling you now. 
<laughs> the Jesuits and the Roman Catholic Church. Um, you can find all this out in a book that I have got. Um, if you have bought my book Drive, you'll find it on there in readers. Edmund Paris's The Secret History of the Jesuits. It's a cracking little book. I read it years ago. Um, the, I think pretty much the Jesuit of sums it all up. But the Roman Catholic Church and the origins of the Roman Catholic Church, are, uh, their dynasty of the Habsburgs and um, the ruling classes, the purples, and even the British royal family all came from these. Yuri Mazda in his flying ship. It looks to be like these are larger than these people's. <clears throat> And there's a bit of Persian gold gobletry in a shape of a goat's head. But they did have Bacchus. And this is the emblem of the Iranian Nazi party. <clears throat> and these are the books that have been brought out over the years. We'll tell you all about Nazi, Iranian, Third, Fourth Reich. Iranian connection. It's how everyone's just been completely, completely blinded to what is going on. So there's a connection with the Habsburgs, the Czechs. And I went to the Czech Republic last year and I found like an unbelievable connection, connection, which is now over flowing into the connections that I made with Switzerland. So Switzerland connection. I got a Czech Republic connection. It's all coming together. And then there's the presence of um the Jews that um, are a, a sort of a ruling class, it, class in Tehran, um, practicing a certain format of um, crazy religion. Um, this is another redhead, just like his dad. So he's got a bit of the strawberry blonde going on. Okay, this is the Canadian, <coughs> excuse me, Prime Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who's an unusual chap. Just has a really incredible story about. Um, North Pole. But the whole elite class have to inbreed to keep the bloodline pure. But this will only, this was what happened to Habsburgs, is the fall of the Habsburgs was because of inbreeding. Here's the Habsburg, Habsburgs. I, I don't laugh at the Habsburgs chain. It was um, some sort of DNA abnormality with the Habsburgs, but they were blonde and they were ginger, but they had this really ugly people said over pronounced jimmy hill chain so jimmy hill was essentially a habsburg so, <laughs> so what you find is another incredible fact is all ivy league schools okay ivy league schools in america so that's yale and berkeley and davis and you name them um they were all purchased um the la on land owned by Persians, all of them. What are, what are the chances? So here's the Habsburgs. These took over Europe from the Holy Roman Empire's collapse. From uh, these rule from about 1400, 1500 on onwards. The Habsburgs. Um, she didn't suffer two bags with the Habsburg chin, um, but you find in them that these. People are chosen, a lot of them, their birthright. Before they even know it, they're off making babies. So they've had to introduce people into these bloodlines to make sure the babies are being born. Now, in the terms of um, Kate, Kate Middleton, uh, there's all sorts of weirdness going on around that at the moment. So her family or her original name is Goldsmith which is also coincidentally linked to the original family name of Spencer, who was Lady Di, who was definitely brought in to spruce up um, the royal bloodline with some fresh non-Mongo um, um, bloodline. Because basically, if you keep on banging your sister or your cousin, it's brother and sister if the Egyptian thing and the Osiris thing going down, um, but if they do go with, a, with their relatives, they end up like, well, we've all seen dueling banjos, haven't we? So here's a Habsburg. Uh, yeah, they're all that many, all that power. And unfortunately, they had the chin and unfortunate uh, cod pieces. Uh, little, little cod piece, isn't it? <laughs> okay. 
I'm, I'm also um, just crazy over the top headwear with the Phoenicians. But look at, uh, excuse me, the Persians. But wow, look at that horse decorated. A ton of clothing and a load of F ether. And here's another Habsburg. Load of little red bows. That's a bit sinister in itself, isn't it? Why red? A lot of red going on there. And she's got beautiful blonde hair. But they've all got a lazy eye. Uh, the women in the Habsburgs. And the men got the chin. She's got the chin, but not as bad as the others. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, look at this one. She's got the crazy head going on. So, yeah, so they've had to do that to keep the um, the bloodline going. Um, you'd be surprised how many other people are uh, connected with this bloodline. Senator Kelly. Senator Kelly who went on to Antarctica. Senator Kelly who was walking out of the Pentagon, scratching his nose. Senator Kelly, who also has Persian origins so i did hear the narrative i think it was on an to bay video of um that all of these elites all presidents apart from they have to be related to the english royal family um that they all have to be uh related to charlemagne charlemagne what the uh, the gaul emperor the french emperor oh, i don't think so I don't think so at all. I don't think that the Gauls or the French had that much influence in the ancient world. And another thing that occurred to me as well is how many countries have the Italians taken over since Ethiopia or, or regained and kept? Because I can't think of any other countries except for Italy that speak Italian. But they didn't actually need to take anywhere over, did they? Anyway, so um, this is interesting. Iran Wire that I read uh, this morning. Uh, did Natis uh, consider Iranians to be Aryans? And it gives you the evidence of what the scientists, or excuse me, the exp Nazi explorers um, had stated. Um, but they, they are stating because it's Iranian, we're biased, that they don't think uh, it's right at all. But you can read it for yourself. But they say the Aryans there uh, divided into Western Europe, the, the Germans, the Romans, the Greeks, the Slavs, the Lets, the Celts, that's myself. Um, the Abidsen and Eastern Asiatic Aryans, um, that is India, Hindu, Aryan, excuse me, Iranian, Persian, Afghan, Armenian, Georgian, just like Stalin and Kurds, which have uh, had a bit of trouble in the past with all of this. This story ongoing. So um, people in religion, I'm not sure if Jesus was a ginger, but I always thought him to be a Phoenician. I'm scratching my head now wondering about the years that he went missing. He was supposed to go into Kashmir, exactly exactly where he went. I'm not wondering. She is um, Mary Magdalene, God love her. She had bad press, didn't she? But you can see her here in a, in a, a post-Raphael, a pre-Raphaelite painting by Auntie Frederick Augusta Sandys, a beautiful ginger, strawberry blonde head mary magdalene and you have red hair day in the islands there's shit loads of red hairs there's another scene of middle ages britain what looks like britain and ginger queens and there's elizabeth who is a ginger uh, roman had a bit of a ginger beard as well looks a bit of a ginger going on and look at that phoenician thing going on there and she got the purple and again with the red bows really gotta find out anybody know what the red bows mean um something to do with the blood club isn't it or the red thing on the wrist is um she's got her wrists well um let me know anyway so yeah this bloodline so the virgin queen some say she was a dude anyway and uh, that's probably why she was a virgin and um Strange story. She's the most powerful woman. She brought in a police state, the first 1984 style police state, apparently, in the world. A portrait of a lady by Botticelli, Ginger. And that is a Roman marble statue. And it's in Istanbul Museum. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And uh, likely the Cleopatra as well was a ginger. Uh -huh. I think Cleopatra was a ginger. I think, yeah, I think the ruling classes were probably gingers. Do you know why? Because when we looked through 
<clears throat> when I done post on North Africa, what color were those white people, the Caucasian people who were occupying America called the Floridians? What color was their hair? It was this color. It was ginger. It was strawberry blonde guys in them pictures that I show you of North America. So where did they come from? And even in China, we have redheads. So it's um, a genetic abnormality, similar apparently to albino. <clears throat> Emperor Otto the Third. They sneak. Looks like they're doing the sneak. He's got the horn. He's got the golden orb. He's got that floral Phoenician thing, and he's got a, I don't know, a rat on a platter or something. But look, still the red cape. Gotta to get to it with that red cape. So, and more gingers and um, Ishmael Sophia, Persian emperor or Persian king. He's got a massive thing on his head. It's not a turban because he's Persian, um, but he's got ginger hair and a ginger beard, and he looks very, very Caucasian to me. And there's actor uh, Rupert Grint out of Harry Potter, who's just like. And there's a woman with red hair and beautiful eyes and beautiful red hair. Who doesn't love beautiful red hair, guys? Eh? I know I do. So let's move on. The Etruscans, the narrative for Romulus and Remus, um, they apparently cited have been on a, born on a small tongue in, in Tuscany. Uh, the Etruscan and then founders of it, and they were Etruscan and then founders of Rome. But the whole narrative has to be allegory. You know, can you really see a wolf um, suckling two baby gingers? Romulus and Remus uh, on the ginger side. Ginger, ginger, blonde, dark hair. They are in apparently biblical times, but I think bring her over into more forward times. But yeah, so um, the Etruscans and the Romans, ruling classes, blonde or ginger. And Romulus and Remus apparently suckled by a wolf. I'm not buying that because basically the wolf would probably eat them. <clears throat> there he is on an ancient Roman coin. Uh, Remus got nicked, sent to jail. Romulus, you don't actually, you, you know, have, it's not called Remus, Rome, is it? It's called Rome after Romulus, obviously. So the beauty of Iran even though they got so much weirdness going on, I'm finding with the whole thing, I'm really quite just wow, my mind's blown. Um, they got this beautiful Moorish feeling geometrics on all of their architecture. Look at the size of them for gates and these big, broad, cool forecourts with all the beautiful flowers. Just beautiful. Marriage of antiquitec, ambience, a light, a vibration. I bet it feels fantastic in these buildings and this technology here. So these are in Tehran, capital for Iran. Another city I do not know much about. They got an Oculus there for some reason. Also part of the technology, but it looks like an old motorbike and stuff in there. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Sound and vision. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in another mosque, just stunning beauty. In a ramp. So what do we think, guys? Do we think that there's a chance that the ruling elites and uh you know i mean all of the royal families and the roman catholics and everyone who we thought might have been in charge were just all really subordinate for the purple people eaters is one year purple people eater unicorn is the phoenicians producing it apparently from a crustacean it really only happens on the coast of lebanon lucky for them because they had the monopoly on this purple dye that was sought after so much. 
and Phoenician beauty and jewelry. <coughs> so they brought trade, and I'm guessing they were goodly traders. They brought like stuff. But what happened, curiously enough, um, is in the 1990s, the wall of oh, Great Wall of Berlin Wall fell. The Berlin Wall came down in the 1990. What happened then was China and Russia and Iran all buddied up together and they took control of the Silk Road and the drug supply. Mm. Now, isn't it coincidental that, you know, um, a Freemason, when they greet one another, they say, and I am a traveler from the East. From the East, where exactly? And they make this purple and they infiltrate it as well with drugs and everything else all of these things that are happening the prostitution the drugs and all of that is all part of this babylonian death cult that they got everybody out there involved with and thinking that is a okay really weirdly so fb extra coming to you right now so i got another post to come this week guys i just want to show you this little extra bit of interest at the end of this video and is this i witnessed this in my city center okay and it was a church that hasn't seen the light of day in over a hundred years and it is the bethany baptist church and what happens is this bit of department store got knocked down and started to expose bethany church now mind-blowing i didn't know anything about it in my life i did know about the witches being burned but not this bit in the same place and this is since since then so there's a plaque here and this thing's got phoenician shells it's got it's beautiful inside but this has been blocked off since late 1800s no one's been in here or touched it or gone near it this plaque here is on about the witches or not the witches president during the reign of bloody mary they got burnt at the stake 500 of them apparently and the last one to be burnt was in the forecourt of bethany's Baptist chapel this is really ancient look at the stones this was in 1923 the last time it was seen to the public eye and then they built this bit here was built in like 80, 1890s, okay? And um, all the rest of the Howells department store. But this bit here is all later. And the bit here is because a World War II bomb landed here and turned all of this into rubble. And then they had to build it all back up. But there you can see Bethany Baptist Chapel all hidden away for a hundred years. No one even knew it was there. I didn't until they knocked this bit down here, this petition here, these walkways through, and so exposing it for the first time. And what I find fascinating as well, guys, is on the other side, you just see the lip of this building here. It's all Phoenician statues on, in windows, um, in, and basically there's about six inches off the, off of the fronts of another building. It's just been blocked off from time. They just blocked off an entire front of the building. Just craziness. So they don't do no damage to that with that digger. <laughs> and there's a house of Clive if Cardiff, our department store in the late 1800s went up. It's a beautiful bit of architecture. And these are the wrought iron bits inside um, the chapel itself. And these have just nobody been there. It's all that time. Uh, so near this spot suffered for the truth. March the 30th, 1555, Rawlins White, a fisherman of this town, Cardiff. Erected president by the presidents of this town. So the narrative is he got burned to death. This plaque was originally mounted on the old Bethany Chapel, which stood on this site. Okay, but it's still there. Um, yeah, so they burnt him alive. Uh, apparently, you have about 500 during the reign of Bloody Mary. 
martyrs, yes. <clears throat> religious persecution, and that's inside the chapel. Not you know, it's a bit ruins. It's a bit a new sort of work. Somebody's been in there for sure. But yeah, all that time, nobody been in there. Look at the floors, wooden and everything. Really lovely. So yeah, I won't, I wouldn't mind getting down there and try and get in there, guys. You know, boots on the ground stuff. I'm going to work on that. It's not exactly breaking an entry on everything. Just want to go and have a look for history purposes, isn't it? So I'm just going to have a look at that maybe, okay? That's what I'm thinking. So yeah, I'll share this video with you guys. So by, some professor have him out those channel. And this lady here, although she's really a little bit creepy and actually she's really like hooked in on fear. She doesn't feel about everything. But her research is, you know, uh, respected by academia and apparently Mr. Professor Hamamoto digs it and gives it credence and says that it is the most important secret nobody knows is that the Persians rule the world. Awfully strange sound coming from the left side side of me. Anyway, I'll see you all soon, guys. It's been awesome to be back. 46 minutes. It's not a long one. I'm going to be back very soon, though, with more postages. See you soon. Peace and love.